Greetings, button mashers! I'm Funky Monkey. Welcome to my house of love! Now, the adult world of relationships, and relating to other people in general, is a strange and confusing business, at least for me. But it would be even more so if it came with a video game excuse plot, as is the case in today's subject, Scott Pilgrim vs. The World. Based on the five-volume indie comic by Brian Lee O'Malley, Scott Pilgrim vs. The World was released in 2010. The movie chronicles the trials and tribulations of the titular character, and his infatuation with one Ramona Flowers. But oh dear, before they can be together, Scott must defeat her seven ex-lovers. Scott Pilgrim vs. The World was a hit with critics, and has found a cult following on home release. But is it worthy of my house of love? There's only one way to find out. So plug in, turn on, tune in, and get ready for a musical melee of not so epic proportions in Scott Pilgrim vs. the World. Meet Scott Pilgrim and his band Sex Babomb. They impress his new girlfriend, 17 year old Knives Chow. Amazing. He's 17, he's 22. I'm not qualified to comment, so let's move on. Life is well enough for him. Until the appearance of Ramona Flowers. Love at first sight? No, still not qualified to comment. Not to worry though. Third time lucky? <laughs> though initial conversation doesn't go too well. I'll leave you alone forever now. Thanks. Scott uses his. Wits. Ordering from Canadian Amazon, for which Ramona delivers packages. And wins a date. Of sorts. And I know I'm skipping over a major character scene here, but... What can I add to it? And so, Ramona cheers on Scott at his Battle of the Bands gig. Where we meet Ramona's first, evil, ex-boyfriend, Matthew Patel. You see, Ramona Flowers has dated some pretty awful guys in her time. And now her latest ex-boyfriend has corralled seven of her other exes together to create a league of sorts to destroy anyone who would ever date her again. This Matthew Patel is the first of these so-called evil ex-boyfriends. He has mystic powers. He can throw fireballs, and he's backed up by a bunch of hipster demon backing dancers. It's a thing. They fight. Scott wins. And now he must break up with 17-year-old Knives Chow. She takes it hard. But there's no time for that, as our protagonist has invited Ramona to his lair. Which almost goes well until Scott decides to take his date on the road, and we meet our second villain, Lucas Lee, and his stunt doubles. Oh, forfeit, forfeit, stunt doubles! Although, Matthew Patel did have his demon hipster backing dancers, but these guys are a fight unto themselves, so it's not really cricket. But Lee's vice is skateboarding, and Scott uses his wits, and Lee's own pride. There are girls watching. To send Hollywood's newest cliche to a fiery defeat. Scott wins. Now, we don't have moments for the villains, but I will offer my sympathies to his stunt doubles. We then meet the Clash at Demonhead, whose lead singer broke our protagonist's heart and whose bassist is our third villain, telekinetic vegan Todd Ingram. Yeah. Ingram recycles the old 10% of our brains myth. Fun fact, we actually use all of our brains, just not all at once. 
And then he goes on about how good veganism is. <laughs> Do me a lemon, Ingram, it's got bells on! And this challenge seems insurmountable, as neither fist nor base can topple the man, Ingram. But our protagonist is Trixie. And one half dairy cup of coffee is all it takes to summon the vegan police. It's revealed here that in the past six months, Toddy Boy's partaken of ice cream and a chicken parmesan. So much for veganism. So it's bye bye to Todd's telekinesis. And Scott wins. But round four is less than an hour later, as we meet Roxy Richter. Yeah, so Rantasmo was available for comment, but not at such short notice. Really though, figuring out who you are, and if you need time to figure out who you are, it's no bad thing. And our heroine steps up. But this is a league joint, so Ramona ragdolls Scott into the fight. <laughs> Scott wins. For all the good it does him. Never nice when the stress of war kicks in. I mean, I'm alright, I live for battle, but... I've seen the toll it takes on some folks. Buy me a shot sometime. Maybe I'll tell you about it. But there's no time to brood, as it's straight into a double event with the Katianagi twins. And it's Amp versus Amp. Sex Babom win. And Scott goes after Ramona. But indie producer Gideon Graves intervenes. Gideon Gordon G-Man Graves. Indie record magnate, would-be trendsetter, partial bum nugget. Oh, and Ramona's most recent ex-boyfriend. And final boss encounter for our hero. Exit Scott to brood. But at Gideon's invitation, Scott faces down Graves at his chaos theatre. But it's not enough. <laughs> And then, 17-year-old Knives Chow sets her sights on Ramona. Until Scott intervenes. But oh dear. Good goddess, man. I mean, mystic fireballs, vegan telekinesis, hologram sonic amp avatar battling. That's all one thing, but this? Straight up pointy thing murder. Murder! I mean, sure, villain and final boss and all that, but... This very much breaks my suspension of disbelief. Scott loses. And in death, Ramona reveals the truth. And our hero learns a greater truth. And returning to the Chaos Theatre for a do-over, our protagonist makes peace. Before the final battle, Scott wins. No, let me rephrase that. Team Scott wins. And so our movie ends as 17-year-old Knives Chow sets her love free. And our heroes disappear to new adventures. So then, my friends, that was Scott Pilgrim versus the world. But in this battle, I feel that it was the world that won. By which of course I mean that I feel that I can't put this one into my house of love. This isn't a serious exploration of trust issues in the relationships of a bunch of Canadian 20-somethings set against the Battle of the Bands. And it is visually stunning. Director Edgar Wright's kinetic visual style once again dominating. In a way, I suppose this could be Wright's superhero movie, our nerdy protagonist battling ever more dangerous waves of villains and learning to love both Ramona and himself. Also, this is Michael Serra's most determined performance, as he never looks comfortable in the role of hero, 
his face a mask of grim determination throughout the fight scenes. Mary Elizabeth Winstead is ethereal as object of affection and living MacGuffin Ramona, and Ellen Wong's 17-year-old Knives Chow, who completes this love triangle, is sweet and young and determined and crazy, and easily the nicest person in this whole movie. Because that's the thing! Despite all this flashy action and martial arts mayhem, this movie has a dark tone. Characters are sarcastic and unsupportive, self-centred and unconcerned, and more than once I cheered the demise of a blatantly unsportsmanlike evil ex. And Scott himself, a wimpy, nerdy bassist for a go-nowhere garage band that sounds so much better without him, does little to endear himself to us, at least until the final scenes. Overall then, it's flashy, exciting and ridiculously cool outside, but Scott Pilgrim is battling a hollow world, and even if he wins, in the end, we lose. Oh well, never mind. I've been Funky Monkey wishing you better days, better movies, and uncomplicated relationships with the wider humanity. So long, folks! <laughs>